back in 1929 or 1930, that was the year that my father first got his camera, noticed the condition of the road. That was a 1928 Studebaker. That is a seven passenger car. the Quink residence. William H. Scott, barbecues. A Neshaminy Falls turkey, better known as a hot dog. Mr. Quink, peeling potatoes. And this is Winnie Quink operating a semaphore for traffic control. This is my mother, Florence Scott, playing tennis on a rather crude tennis court with the sun always in the opponent's eye. Note the buildings across the street. This is probably the winter of uh, 1931 or so. Chamonix Falls Park. This is something that uh, no one has seen for a good many years since it's been taken over by the water company. the park itself. And years ago, I can recall having a uh, miniature uh, roller coaster and also uh, a pavilion. And I believe it had a carousel at one time. It was a big popular attraction. Notice the uh, boats that are for rent. On the, sitting there on the uh, bank. There was a quite a popular attraction for people from Philadelphia. It came up by the Reading Railroad train and got off at the Neshaminy Falls station. That is the locks that control the uh, water level. Uh, I never knew of them to uh, drain the, uh, the creek, but apparently it's set up to do that. Park boat on the Chamonix. This was a popular attraction, as you can see here. The water go round. This, I think, only appeared for one year. The fellow had a clever idea on how to make a couple of dollars. This is a swimming dock also at the park, down close to the uh, dam. They also had a uh, water raft one year or two. Merry maids and merry men on the Chamonix. This was taken up near the uh, the upper tip of the uh, island uh, on the shore, not from the island itself. This is taken uh, at the uh, Quink uh, dock 
uh, probably in conjunction with other people, other neighbors. And uh, it's about the only thing that we have of that particular area. Note the uh, tents across the, uh, the creek on the far side, known as Severin. There. This was a wee raft near where we uh, uh, swam, and this is known as the Severn Seven. Uh, seven uh, inner tubes linked together with the swimmers. It's known as the Severin Group that did the camping on the east side of the river. We're now looking at the west side. Uh, just uh, south of the island. And this is just above where that stream comes in to, the, uh, to join the creek. And the last time I saw it, it didn't have very much water coming down through it. Jack's house on the Chamonix. I'm not sure just what his last name is, but it's one of those houses that was along that uh, road or thoroughfare that uh, uh, is accessible from the highway. Sebastian Meadows on the Chamonix. Mr. Sebastian owned a great deal of property uh, in the early days and rented out the property to uh, various uh, campers. Even the little landing where we had our dock was uh, rented from Mr. Sebastian. So this is where people came and tent for the summer, put a tent up over a wood platform. We're now viewing the upper edge of the island that's to our right. That was very popular for swimming. And this was taken, I think, uh, on the Sebastian Meadows, one of the young fellows there, quite athletic. This is at the upper end of the island. It was shallow and nice pebble bottom to it. Most of the creek was mud but this particular area always seemed to be uh, clear of mud and had nice fine pebbles and made it great for swimming. This is viewed from uh, Matthew Best's house up on the hill above the meadows. Tippy Canoe. Uh, this was part of a, a group of uh, young campers that uh, uh, had some fun trying to uh, knock each other off of the canoes. Uh, why uh, some of them didn't get seriously hurt is beyond my uh, recollection. Uh, there were also some uh, uh, canoe parades, I guess you would call it, where these uh, energetic campers would uh, tie canoes together in a form of a flotilla and uh, parade up and down the, uh, the water with all kinds of uh, decorations uh, streaming from the uh, canoes in the form of a, a mast and uh, uh, quite uh, colorful. Uh, playing uh, banjos and other uh, instruments. I believe this is up uh, considerably far up the uh, the creek there on the way towards the uh, the bridge, and this uh, is uh, one of Severin's big boy. This is a square nose uh, boat, one of the fastest on the creek. And uh, I think everybody kind of dreaded that. 
And this was a dad in the Quinscott's two on the Chamonix. And this is my father's pride and joy to have a, uh, an ongoing uh, motorboat. And again, generating waves which were probably way too big for the, uh, uh, for the size of the creek. I believe that's my sister, Martha. This is Fred Arnett, one of our neighbors that had a cottage along the, the creek uh, with his uh, big metal boat, which is sort of unusual. And this is he and his wife now without the uh, big load. It was quite a fast uh, boat. Fred Arnett was a, an actor on the stage in a vaudeville. Again, this is one of the Severin's high-speed boats that was capable of doing a good job of pulling a surfboard. A winter scene. Unfortunately, there was a lot of uh, snow that particular season, uh, so it had to be shoveled off the ice in order to make room for the skaters, and this is why you see them going in circles. And uh, This may have been, okay, on the left is uh, Winnie. And I believe that is Gib Nuremberg swinging from the rope, as I recall. was a, a time of the year where my father was able to skate all the way up the uh, close to the uh, bridge at the north end of the creek and he ran across this um, uh, skater and just couldn't resist now um, in this scene here is Winnie Winnie Quank uh, the girl with a white coat and, and this is Winnie and my sister Martha That's Winnie, right there. The ice jam. Uh, we had a warm spell there, and that broke up the, uh, the creek. And uh, this is up at the uh, north end. And what you see here is one of our weekly walks that we took through the woods uh, to get a little exercise and get warmed up. Since we didn't have uh, year-round heat in our in our uh, summer cottage there, it was always quite chilly. We had to depend upon uh, kerosene stoves and the fireplace for our source of heat during the winter. Now the be next uh, set of scenes is known as Quinscott's in bloom, and it represents all kinds of, uh, that was Carl Colehouse spraying our apple tree. Uh, th these uh, pictures were taken in the year of 1937-1938. And the color on some of the Kodachrome is uh, fading a bit, and they're not quite as clear as they uh, could be. in our side yard. Okay, Jesse, you were saying about the, the amount of noise that I generated with the, uh, with my cars and engines and this was the start of it that uh, took place about 1930 during the depression when my brother-in-law helped me build this I was just a uh, young teenager at the time and these are more advanced versions uh, during the later years using wagon pneumatic wagon wheels
and then later graduated to some larger industrial pneumatic tires, larger engines and a little faster. There's your house with uh, screens, uh, Carl Kohlhaus' house, and uh, Ed Nuremberg's store there in the background. That's Ed Nuremberg with my sister, Laura, and that's Gib Nuremberg, Gibson, and that's me down at the rocks, just below the dam. That's the bridge that crossed Brownsville Road, across the creek, and this is a result a flood that took place in 1938. This, all this destruction was just north of the uh, Brownsville Bridge. And this is a scene from the creek above the bridge, uh, several miles above. 